Hi, my name is Ivar and I'm going to introduce you to Thonny. Thonny is a Python programming environment for learning and teaching programming. I have used it successfully for teaching introductory programming course in University of Tartu and I want to show you how it helped me. This is what my students get when they run Thonny for the first time, just a script editor and the shell. Nothing special here, but Thonny is meant to grow with the user. After my students have done their first experiments in this minimal environment, I ask them to open the variables view. With few examples, I can explain them pretty quickly how variables work. Programming instructors usually agree that for teaching control flow, code animation can be a great help. Thony makes code animation really easy and revealing. Let's see how would I explain assignment, while statement and expression evaluation. I run the program in debug mode and the first statement of the program gets focused. This is an assignment statement. Most visual debuggers would treat this as a black box, but with Thony we can go deeper. I tell Thony to make the next step by pressing the step key. This opens up a small box, a temporary working area for expression evaluation. You can think of it as a piece of paper where Python repeatedly picks a sub-expression, erases it and writes down its value. Our expression is a call to the function int. In order to convert something to an int, Python must compute the value of this something. Therefore, the next step focuses the argument. This is again a function call, so we need to evaluate the argument and so on. In similar style, Tony helps me take apart and explain the execution of other statements and expression in this program. Stepping through the code like this allows me to remind my students that Python doesn't worry about the meaning of the programs. It just works by taking small step according to a set of simple rules. There is no magic in programming anymore. Everything can be explained. After one or two demonstrations, my students are able to use the debug mode on their own, either for finding bugs in their programs or for clearing confusion about some language construct. Once my students feel comfortable with variables and control flow, I teach them how to define their own functions. Here also, Tony helps me a lot by visualizing both def statements and function calls. I find it convenient that Python treats functions as values, so I can tell my students that def statement simply stores function code to a variable. I can open up the object inspector and assure them that the funny thing in this variable really contains the function code. Whenever we need to evaluate a function call, Python first evaluates the arguments, looks up the function code and it opens up a new working area with its own variables and progress focus. We step in function body just like in the top level code. Oh no, a recursive call. Here I can convince my students that Python doesn't really need to know anything about recursion. It's just a function call. Python finds the function definition from globals. We step into the call and a working area appears. Tony makes it clear that each function call has its own variables and progress focus. When we reach the base of the recursion, we can start popping the call stack. Each return statement gives its value back to the corresponding call expression and destroys the stack frame. Maybe you noticed that so far I have presented a simplified model of variables and values. I don't want to introduce the concept of pointers too early. But my, when my students start working with lists, they need to learn that the variable actually contains the pointer to an object, not the object itself. I start by creating two list variables like that. Now I append a value to one of them. Why does the new value appear in both? For explaining this, I enable a special mode which opens up another table called heap. No variables table maps names to heap addresses. The actual values can be seen only in the heap table and I can point out that both variables refer to the same object. I hope I got you interested in Tony. 
If you want to try it yourself, then go to download section of Thonis homepage and pick a suitable installer. It runs on Windows, Mac and Linux. It is open source and free to use. I'm looking forward to hear your comments and suggestions. Bye!